Hey everyone, it's Elaine and welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you very much. If you remember last week, I showed you that I was going to make some soft cover journals and the base of my journal was going to be this kind of vinyl-y paper kind of stuff <laughs> that Fabric Samples comes on. It's usually smaller samples and they're stitched to the bottom of this piece. Um, and of course the description of what it is and everything is, you know, on there, the color. And it's one of those things, just busy work. You sit in front of the TV and you kind of just pick it all loose. So that then when you are ready to create, voila, your fabric is already separated from this vinyl -y stuff. Well, I think I also told you when I took all of this apart, I was like, there is so much of this. I need to do something with it. So I tossed it all in a box together. You know, I, I've been trying to keep myself organized and everything sorted. So then when I moved into my studio and all, sure enough, I had it all together and had been thinking about what to do. So the thought of soft cover journals came. It's really pliable, but yet it's durable. I can't tear this stuff. All right, so I just cut it down, and if you remember, I had covered the, um, I think when you saw it last, if I remember correctly, um, you had seen where I had glued the sorry silk ribbon to the piece of um, plasticky stuff here, papery stuff. That was all the farther I got, just to kind of show you what my base was going to be. Well, since then, I had a whole craft day. Um, me and some of my friends went off to a location, and it was just one full day. Eight o'clock in the morning, and I think we finally gave up about 10 o'clock that night and all headed home. But it was fun. I stayed focused. Boy, did I stay focused. So here, I'm not going to show you all 20 of them. I'm just going to show you a few so you can get the idea. And then later on, I'll go through all of the covers and everything with you. So this is one of them that I did. It is pretty cute, don't you think? So let me tell you the good and the bad and the ugly about it. As we see, it is fraying a little bit. That doesn't bother me. And that will stop because my next step is to do the inside cover. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But... And then to stitch all the way around it. So that fraying doesn't bother me. It actually adds a little character and makes it already look like it's old. So then the next thing I did is I went through all of my scraps. Now remember, I am given a boatload of fabric samples all the time. So I have solids and prints and everything. So I tried to kind of get something that would kind of go with this. So I picked a dark brown, which you got to say, this one is a little velvety feeling. And then another piece that was, um, I want to say it had like leaf designs and everything on it. So I layered them up. And now also, you know, I have made a bunch of leather book plates that I have in my Etsy shop. And I had already coffee stained um, up on a page the word journal like 10 times. So I just put that paper to the back of the um, piece of leather and then just kind of trimmed it with scissors and everything, glued all that together. Well, then I took Fabrifix and I went ahead and glued this piece down. Then I glued this piece on top of it. And then after this was all adhered, I glued this to it. Now, this is where a critical error happened. Because what I did not think about was the brads going through leather, fabric, 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 and vinyl. So I wouldn't do that. I, but luckily for me, haha, luckily for me, I did not do a very good job at gluing the leather to this piece of cloth. So I was able to peel back a little bit and put my brads in and then really glue it down well. Now I tried to poke through the brads through some of them. Not going to lie about it. I tried to get it through, but the little brad legs were just not long enough. That's and I even tried it probably on more than I should have thinking that sooner or later one would work. So that's not the case. 
So go ahead and adhere your brads to your book plates or whatever you're going to put brads into first. Go ahead and do that. Don't think it's going to go through all those layers. And so, and then what I did is at the end of my sorry silk, I took some more of the book cover fabric and I just um, stitched little tabby things on the end of the fabric to kind of give them some weight and to put it, tie it all together. And then this is just the other one that I just pulled today to show you. And it's a stripe. And then again, two different pieces of fabric. And I used a zigzag stitch on all of them to sew them down. Now, most of them I just used a beige, but there were some that tended or leaned toward more having um, a black thread. Just two or three of them. So I didn't have to change my thread but one time. And then in this case, I didn't use this um, fabric as my little tabs. I used the bottom book plate as my tabs. Now, aren't they adorable? And you know how much this cost me? Absolutely the price of the sorry silk. And that was the only thing that I purchased. Everything else were samples, leather samples, and fabric samples that I've been given. Um, I've gained quite a reputation, you know. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't believe. The other day someone came and, and sent me a message at work and said, I have all the scrapbook paper. Can you do something with it? I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I can. And it was tons. And then there were also beads and charms and just all kinds of stuff in there. So if you start putting feelers out, the stuff will come. It will come. Anyhow, so that's what the inside cover looks like. Um, you can see my stitch marks and everything. So now my next um, step is going to be to do fabric in here. However, I will not glue the fabric down until my plan is to do a pencil pocket here, a little pocket here, and then a bigger pocket across the back side. All right. So I'm, I'm, I've got my fabric kind of, that's why I didn't pull out all 20 of them because I've already, didn't think ahead, already matched up what fabric I'm going to put with what cover. So I didn't want to take all that apart. That would have been a real pain. Um, so that's the plan then. So I'm going to glue the pencil, the pocket, the pocket onto that fabric. Then once it's glue has dried, you do not want to run a, 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 I can't talk, a sewing machine needle through wet glue. Trust me. So I will glue, 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 stitch, stitch, stitch. And then once all that is set and I have done all 20 of them, I will come back. And then I will match up the inside cover um, yeah, and then like glue down this half, make sure it's good and sturdy. And then I glue down this half. I don't glue the whole thing at one time. I never have. I, I just have learned my lesson that when you go to pull this side, this side's going to shift and put you out of whack. So it's, it's important to really glue this down. Make sure it's even almost dry before you move on to another section. So that's my next steps. Um, if you're playing along with me, get busy because uh, it's going to be fun. And then after that, hopefully we'll start playing with signatures and everything and, and start getting um, a signature in each of these. I'm just going to do one signature, give or take 20, 25 pages. Haven't quite decided, been pulling them together, but that's it. So this is part two of the soft cover journal, and I hope you appreciate it. And, you know, come on back. I put up a video every Tuesday and I also show my goodies on, you know, Instagram and Twitter and once in a while I'll even pop something up on Pinterest. You never know. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of me. So if you haven't subscribed already, I would greatly appreciate if you would. And like I said, come on back and check out part three next week. See you later. Bye bye.